Hi, this is Chuck with Nerd3D. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at branched path tracing, what it is and when you should use it. Branched path tracing allows you to focus the render samples on the types of materials that need the most rendering. For example, here, the diffuse samples are set to three, and that means that for each pixel sample, which remember, all of these get squared, so there's actually 16 real samples, each of those samples gets branched into three squared or nine additional samples for each diffuse. The same thing happens with each of the subcategories under branch path tracing. For example, the subsurface samples, which because this is a skin material, is turned up rather high, there are going to be 36 subsamples for each of the 16 pixel samples. Now, when do you want to use and when do you not want to use branch path tracing? As a rule of thumb, if you're using your CPU for your render device, you're going to want to use branch path tracing. If you think about the way branch path tracing works and the way a CISC core CPU, a complex instruction set CPU, that's the way branch path tracing thinks. It does a lot of things in one cycle. That's what CISC processors do. But if you're going to be using your graphics card, the processors in a graphics card are actually RISC cores, and they think better when they have smaller bytes to chew on. In other words, they don't want to use branch path tracing. They want to use the direct non-branched method. Now, when you switch off branch path tracing, you're going to reduce the quality because you're no longer splitting the samples into subsamples. So what you'll want to do is take a look and find the highest number in your branched path. Six in this case. Multiply that by your pixel samples. 24. And then turn off your branch path. That will give you roughly the same amount of samples in your render as you would have gotten if you've been using branch path tracing. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. If you use this setup with the GPU, you're going to take about, for this render, roughly 33 seconds. If I enabled branch path tracing again and set the samples back to four, it would take almost exactly the same amount of time to render. It's because GPUs don't benefit from branch path tracing. On the other hand, the same set of values for a CPU would make an almost three to one difference. The branched path tracing would be three times faster than using the non-branched method. That's when you want to use and not use your branch path setup. Hopefully this will help you understand how to set up branch path tracing and how to use it to its best benefit. Thanks for watching and have fun using Poser.